Hello, I'm Jason Ray with Inside Out Dog Training, and in this video, we want to talk to you about loose lead walking. Now, it's January and it's the new year, and everybody wants to get healthy come the new year. That's like the new resolution for everybody. No, I said that wrong. It's the new year's resolution for everybody. I think you get my point. Everybody wants to be healthy. Well, guess what? If you're gonna be healthy, why not let your dog be healthy? And the best way to do that is take long walks together. So I'm gonna go over some of the tools that you're gonna need to have a successful walk with your dog. But I thought it would be fitting to start with what you don't need. And that would be this prong pinch collar thing. So if you're working with someone and they say, hey, let's put this on your dog and show them who's the leader. You should say, well, you try it on, right? See if it hurts. Because I, I got a feeling I'm not going to be dumb enough to do it, but I, I think this would hurt. Surely it doesn't hurt that bad. Sit. Ah! Ah! Oh, f How do you use this? It's like a necklace from hell. I don't even think that's on right. Think it'll hurt? Ow! Oh, f Yep. Nope. I'm out. How do you get it off? That hurt. No. And this trains the dog from the inside out, okay? Nope, I train the dog from the inside out. This trains the dog from the outside in using force. We're gonna kill that one. Next on the list are these little chokes. These are annoying, right? I don't think this would hurt as much as that prong, but that is not how you wanna train your dog to walk on a lead. You really don't need this at all. Second, or no, third, gosh, I can't count today, is a harness. I don't even own one, I had to go buy one. And the reason is, this just gives your dog more permission to pull harder. Now there's certain breeds where you might have to have this, but please don't take that as permission to use one. This is bad. I think like sled dogs use this. Just holding this makes me want to pull you right now. So the tools you will need, very simple. You need a good solid leash with a grip right here on the back of that, right? So you can hang on in case you have a heavy puller. And you need a sturdy collar. Now this isn't the most sturdiest flat collar I've got. It's the one I use for my dogs. If you have a heavy puller, you might not want to get this clip, okay? You're going to get the one that actually has the notches in it and you put the little, you know, like a belt. You know what I'm talking about. We want to teach the dog to follow us. So again, all we're going to do is take sharp angles and do almost like a square. So let's start with that. So I'm going to walk here, stop. See how she goes ahead of me? She going ahead of me? It's all right. She's curving, she's still not aware of what I'm doing, right? She's not paying attention to me. And so you wanna take sharp angles, just like this. Keep it nice and simple. And you can start with a square because that makes it really easy, just like this, right? Once you've done that a couple of times, your dog is either gonna shoot out way ahead of you and kinda of pull you, or they're gonna do soft like what she did and just not pay attention. So you could do that, um, gosh, you could do that five, six, seven, eight times in a square. And then you wanna start mixing it up. And when you mix it up, you want to still take 90 degree angles. So no matter how this looks, you don't wanna take soft circles. They're all sharp turns. So let me show you. We're gonna go here, I'm gonna turn, go here. And if you notice, this really isn't a square, right? But I'm taking really sharp turns, and I make my way back to the camera. And when you do that, right, and you take all those different angles, your dog starts to go, well, what the hell are you doing? Like, where are you going? And that's what we want. We want them to be aware of the handler, which is you, right? You want your dog to know that you're on the other end of the lead and not just pull you. So let me show you one more time. Just gonna mix the angles up, just like this. Maybe I'll go this way, turn here. Some heavy pullers, it takes, you know, 15, 20 minutes. I mean, it took them a year. Most people teach their dog to pull and they do that for a year and then think they can fix it in five minute session. You gotta be patient with your dog, right? They're patient with you, you should be patient with them. So I'm just gonna keep going angles. And look how well Maggie is walking on that lead. See the difference? It's super simple and super easy. So a few tips to make the stop, stay, and change direction uh, exercise a little bit better and a little bit more polished. So 
Let's see what we could do here. First of all, remember, don't do the circles, okay? This doesn't teach, a, if a dog pulls on a leash, this circle thing doesn't work. And turns, right? If you go to turn, doing a slow turn doesn't work either. So if you're like this, right? Hoping your dog makes the right choice, that's not gonna work, right? You wanna stick to the sharp angles, walk, chest out, look forward, and continue with the dog. The second thing, is remember, we're not correcting our dog, we're reversing what they already know. So most of the time, if you have a heavy puller, tight lead means walk, right? Because that's how they're pulling you down the street. We wanna reverse that to that means walk, this means stop. That's what stop, stay, change directions will do for you. And another thing is we don't correct them. So let me give an example. If Maggie walks out in front of me like this, when I turn, to change directions, I'm not pulling or correct. This has nothing to do with correction whatsoever. All we're doing is saying, hey, follow us. So you wanna make sure that we keep those few concepts that we want a nice, relaxed lead, just like this. We wanna take sharp turns and we're not correcting. We're just gonna let them go ahead of us and turn and go the other way. So those are a few tips to make that exercise a little bit better.